so I have I have a couple videos about accent now I think it's important it can be helpful when you're learning a language to know what you're learning exactly and what you're not learning to learn that there is a wide range of that language right so if you go to China you find oh actually there are a lot of small dialects Chinese is not just standard Mandarin and standard Cantonese there's a lot more in China than just those two now of course English is the international language and so in Australia the UK the United States right Canada these places of course have different ways of, of, of speaking so there are different accents based on geography based based on nationality based on culture and then there are of course the non-native English accents out there right but I want to focus on what we call native English and specifically on the United States American English how much variety is there in terms of accents in terms of the way people speak do most people sound pretty much the same is it really different and I would say that it depends on where you are right so if you're on the East Coast most of the East Coast especially Northeast area or the West Coast then you're going to even the Southwest then you're going to feel that a lot of what you hear is well there are some small things people in California kind of sound different from people in New York but it's not that different it's not shocking right but then when you go to the south or you go to Texas or you go to Appalachia which is what we're going to talk about in this in this video you find wow actually there are some really different ways of speaking and I've never heard of this stuff I've never seen this before because it's it isn't as common so there are a lot of small pockets in the United States where accents are totally different where there are different dialects there are many actually some of them are mixes with other languages like French for example some of them are heavily influenced by for example Ireland and or pe people who came from Ireland and then sort of settled in the United States and their accent is affected by where they came from and some I'm not quite sure why I'm not exactly sure why so we're going to watch a couple of videos just to see an example of that there's one mountainous region in the United States known as Appalachia and in Appalachia people speak a certain way that you may or may not have heard so let's let's watch one of the videos we'll talk about some of the things that they're talking about we'll talk about some of the pronunciation points and then see what we can take from it see what we can learn from it in our own exploration of the English language so let's let's look at the first one where do you want to go on vacation <laughs> <laughs> if I was gonna go on a vacation I'd just stay right on you oh, yeah. well, mind is all the time in here. we are 20 years behind the whole country but I wouldn't swap places with nobody. I feel much more comfortable here being 20 years behind everybody than I would be sitting in a lot of places and being so miserable. You don't like your neighbor. You don't speak to your neighbor. You're, you're better with the world. All right, so how much of that could you understand? Could you understand all of it? Maybe, maybe you can go back and listen to it again. But the first time I listened to this, this is not the first time I've seen it. I've seen it a few times. I had to go back and listen to a couple of parts to catch exactly what they're saying. A lot of things are mixed together, very, very closely blended together. And there are some sounds that are added. And there are some words that, for example, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say. And so I'm not really familiar with it. Now, I, I do understand the general meaning. Of course, it's not that strong. So you get a kind of southern slow a bit of a drawl uh, kind of 
pulling the words out, stretching them a bit. But there's a bit more than that, too. It's even more extreme than this is from my perspective, right? It's, for me, even more extreme than a southern, a strong southern accent because things are smushed and blended together even more. And there are those words that I'm not quite, quite sure about. So what's an example of that? He says, stay right on here. Stay right on here. Now, my first question is, why, was he, why is he saying on? Why is he saying stay right on here? Normally, we would just say stay right here. I'm just going to stay right here. Where would you go if you could go on a vacation? I would just stay right here, which I think is a very charming idea. Right? I don't want to go anywhere. I'm happy here. This is my favorite place. I think that's cool. I respect, I respect that, to be very happy with where you are, where you live, where you're from. But to add on is an interesting thing. But the way he says it is, stay right on air. So the H sound in here is hard to catch because it sounds like right on er, right on er. But actually he's saying right on here, right? Okay, so that's an interesting one. Then he says, it's where my mind is all the time anyhow. But when he says anyhow, it's not like anyhow with a clear H sound. One of the common things that I'm noticing is this very... Uh, soft H that it's that's so it's not even there really anyhow anyhow it's kind of blended together right the other one swap places with nobody I wouldn't swap places with nobody now this is an interesting one and you would hear this outside of just Appalachia to use nobody instead of anybody right I wouldn't swap places with anybody means I don't want to be in anyone else's shoes or I wouldn't want to leave my own life circumstances. I wouldn't want to leave where I am and be anyone else. I don't want to be a rich, famous person. I want to be me, right? I wouldn't swap places. I wouldn't swap places with nobody seems to mean, if you're to look at that sentence, so you would? <laughs> Is that what that means? But that's not what he means when he says it, right? If you hear people say, I'm not going to talk to nobody. I'm not going to talk to nobody. Reading that, you say, that means you will talk to people, right? I'm not going to talk to nobody. But what it really means is, I'm not going to talk to anybody. So it's kind of a flip, and it keeps the original meaning of anybody, even though it's the opposite word. So it would be hard to understand reading it, you have to sort of feel the meaning from the whole situation, from the context. The other thing that I think is interesting is, and you'll hear it for the next one as well, instead of saying, just waiting, they often take out the ing sound and just have an n, waiting, 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 waiting. Right? That's a common thing for many parts of the United States, right? And often it's spelled, if you spell it, it has an apostrophe at the end, uh, after the n. The other thing, though, that's added is an A, a waitin', a waitin', a waitin'. That's an interesting one. I had not heard that one before. So why don't we just listen to this one one more time just for fun? Where do you want to go on vacation? <laughs> if I was going to go on a vacation, I'd just stay right on you. Oh, yeah. Well, mind is all the time, isn't it? We are 20 years behind the whole country. But I wouldn't swap places with nobody. I feel much more comfortable here being 20 years behind everybody than I would be sitting in a lot of places and being so miserable. You don't like your neighbor. You don't speak to your neighbor. You're, you're bitter with the world. I like, I like how he says world. Bitter to the world. world. It's, there's not really a D sound there. I, I like this pronunciation. I like this way of speaking. I think it's cool. Now, I'm from Ohio, and there are some little pieces of that that are also in some parts of Ohio. Some little pieces. But it's definitely not quite that that strong, right? And it depends on where you are in Ohio and who you're talking to. Okay, let's look at let's look at another one. This in this one we're going to it's the same place also Appalachia, we're going to learn a couple of words that are used there. 
that I I wasn't familiar with. So let's learn a couple of a couple of words. There's just somebody coming up with a, a strange word is what it means. I mean, let's say you're tr trying to get something done, you're building something, and you'll take a look at it, like the word Saigoglin. Uh, uh, you're looking at it, and it's all out of line, and you just might come up with the word Saigoglin. Uh, uh, I do that myself. Uh, can't think of anything right off, but... Uh, I, I come up with a lot of new words myself, and so you get somebody standing around to hear that, and okay, it's Saigoglin. Um, say a carpenter has done a real poor job, and then you say, that's all Saigoglin, you know, it, he it didn't have his wall straight, or... Yeah, they stand back and look, if something like that, they say, that thing's Saigoglin. Saigoglin. That thing's Saigoglin. I really like how that guy talks. He's in the next one, right? He's in the next one. That guy's awesome. That thing's Saigoglin. That thing's Saigoglin. I think he, he talks like that because he doesn't have teeth. So this is there's this is interesting because there there's a word here that I didn't know, but you can learn the meaning of the word just by paying attention to what is being said, right? They describe it. Uh, the carpenter is building something. He doesn't do it quite right, and so we describe it as Saigoglin. Now, is that a common word? Again, I had never heard that before, before I watched this. So no, it's not a common word. But that also tells you the importance of knowing the context and learning things when you learn things from the situation. You have to understand what's going on and pay attention. And then, okay, people say that. Fine. What does it really mean? Maybe it's something like crooked. It's crooked. Or some people would say it's off. It's a bit off. So it's either off or it's crooked. Right now, some things are just about the frequency that that words are used, like myself. Right, he the the guy who comes up with the word says, I, "I do that myself. I do that myself." Now, people do say that, but he says it a couple times, and in other places of the video, he says it. So that's another interesting thing is that in some places, some words are just more frequent than in other places. It's the same word, but they might use it more. And I have a feeling that myself would be uh, would be one of those examples. I do that myself. I something something myself. I don't use that myself very often, not very often. The other one that is that is actually useful here is right off. Right off. So right off means from my mind right now in the moment. In that in that case, he can't he can't come up with an example in this moment. But it does happen, and he's saying, I do that sometimes, right? I can't give you an example right off, and we usually add the top of my head. But I do I do that. You have to you have to sort of trust that I do that. So let's watch that one one more time. I think that one's interesting. Sai Goglin. Here we go. There's just somebody coming up with a, a strange word is what it means. I mean, let's say you're tr trying to get something done. You're building something. And you'll take a look at it, like the word Saigoglin. Uh, uh, you're looking at it, and it's all out of line. And you just might come up with the line, word yeah. uh, Saigoglin. Uh, I do that line. myself. Uh, can't think of anything right off, but uh, I, I, I come up with right a lot of new off. words myself. And so you get somebody can't standing around to right hear off. that, and okay, it's Saigoglin. Say a carpenter has done a real poor job, and then you say, that's all Saigoglin, you know. Sigh, it, he God. didn't have his wall straight, or... Yeah, they stand back and look. If something like that, they say, that thing's Saigoglin. I think that for, for these, we get, a, we get a perspective on how communication works, right? How language works. Language doesn't work by somebody saying these are the rules let's all learn it and let's all speak the same way language works by this organic process of people playing around with things right and that i think is what allows for new ac new accents to create new languages right new branches from latin came the other romance languages right because people were just playing around, coming up with their own words naturally and people hearing that. He's describing in that one the process of creating a new language, right? If you let this process go for 300 years, this 
Appalachian English would be a whole language by itself, right? So that's interesting. All right, let's let's look at one more of these. Let's look at one more. It's like people used to you know, like you go in the store and say, put it in the bag. Old people say you put it in the pole. <laughs> That's a bag. I used to uh, go to the store, walk two miles to the store, and when I was a kid, and carry a 25-pound polka flower home. That's flour, by the way. Flour. Flour. Polka flour. And me and my two sisters and one brother, we'd be waiting on them at the house to get our candy. Saul, so, uh, the older man I was talking about, had a little polka candy. He I said, well, I, uh, I forgot to get anything. Boy, we'd scream. Oh, here it is. Plum was a common word when I was growing. Uh, plum this and plum that. Uh, and you, plum over there. Uh, oh, right. uh, well, he was just plumb more out. And that copper mine, that vein, they tunneled under the ground, plumb out through here to Snowbird. Interesting. All right, so these two, we have two, P-L-U-M-B, plum, and the other one was a poke. A poke is a, a bag and, or a kind of container or a bag, and plum is kind of like an adverb for... It could be all the way or something like that. Ex extremely, totally, totally, extremely, or maybe all the way. Maybe totally and all the way. Something kind of like that. And I actually knew these before. These two I'd heard. Maybe the friends of grandparents using. I can't remember where I've heard them, but I've heard both of them. I've heard people say, I plumb forgot. I plumb forgot. Now, I'm from Ohio. And that's not too far away from this region, so maybe there's some... I don't know where it comes from, right? But but I've definitely heard that. A plum forgot means I totally forgot, I completely forgot. The other one, a poke of something, right? I thought meant a, just a little piece. A poke, of, a poke of candy, I thought just meant a little clump. They're using it to say a bag. So maybe it's used slightly differently. I don't know. It's not. It's not really a... It's not even a common word. It's not something that I'm even suggesting that you learn. I'm just try trying to sort of explore this with you. Um, but I, I find it interesting that there, there is this, it seems like, not pressure, culture of playfulness with language here in this region. And I guess everybody has that to some degree. But... It's more, it seems to be more imp man, part of the culture here, right? Where people like to play around with words and say, oh, yep, sometimes if I don't know what I want to say, I'll just say whatever I feel like saying. And that's, what I'll, that's what I'll say. It's my word. And that's cool. I like that kind of playfulness because, again, that's the process of, that's, that's how languages, that's how new languages form. That's how language changes. So I find it interesting. Again, he, he says a waitin'. He adds an A, just like the other guy said, a sittin'. He says a waitin'. So they're adding A to ING words, apparently. Um, and the other one was, he says flower instead of flower. We actually pronounce flower like, like the flower you would use to make dough for bread as exactly the same as F-L-O-W-E-R, flower, right? Flower, flower, same thing. He's saying it as flower. Flower, poke a flower, poke a flower. He notices, he recognizes that that's different. So I think that's that's also interesting. He's able to sort of say, ah, oh, yeah, I know that this is a unique thing because I can compare it against what you, camera person, might be saying. Might be flower is what you would say. I say flower, poke flower. So keep your ears out for interesting accents. If you want me to explore any others, let me know because I'm always interested in, in hearing different ways of speaking. I find it to be very interesting. If you haven't already, make sure you hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. And of course, check out my full courses in the links in the description. Mm -hmm.